Ladies and gentlemen, how is everybody? So welcome to the chainsaw chain comparison video. Um, we're gonna try to find out what is the best bang for your buck, where you getting the best quality versus price. Um, I've been in the search for that for a while now. What I used to use was this here, the 72 LGX. Um, you can still find it in bulk rolls. I don't have a chain splitter and all that. Um, new old stock kind of thing, but they quit making that. Forgive me, I don't know when. I now use the 72 EXL, and needless to say, I'm in the search for something else. So we're going to see what is the best bang for the buck. I might still stick with this considering money and performance of the others. So what we have here is seven brands. These are most popular you know, styles that I've found to be. There are some other ones out there, so I apologize if I don't have them. These are all Square chisel chain, full chisel. They are round ground, meaning they use a round file. All of them use 730 seconds. The still recommends 1364. So you can use 730 seconds down to about half the tooth life. Once that's gone, then you gotta switch to this because it just becomes too blunt. I don't know why that felt like it was bent, but it's not. Um, and with that being said, they are all the same. So 3 8 pitch, 50 gauge chain, because that's what I run, 84 drive links. Um, first thing we're going to compare is the price. But before I do that, I want to go and say that I am not affiliated with any of these companies. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I have no persuasion one way or the other. I'm just going to try to give you my most honest opinion. The 72 LGX is what I started using. And used to be able to get this really cheap, but last time I bought it, it was $18 a loop for the size that I specified. Um, the 72XL is currently $19.25 a loop. None of these prices include tax. I bought this at a saw shop over the hill. This is Still's version. This is the 33RS. That's $44. I know, ouch, right? Then we have the Org, uh, the Husqvarna X-Cut C83-1950. We have the Archer, which doesn't have a style, just has a part number. It's FC-A-050-84DL, $19. Uh, the Archer 1950 Then we have the Bailey's Logging Supplies, Bailey's Online, very popular, the Woodland Pro. I know a lot of guys that use these. This is the 30RC, and it comes in at a tender price of about $24. Then we have the Forester. This is the 30FC. They says on the box this replaces Oregon 72LGX, and that is $17. Cool packaging, but at um, the end of the day, packaging doesn't matter, except these press packages, which you have to have an engineer's degree to get into. If you don't, you end up with bloody fingers. So... Now, what we're going to do is you have the price breakdown. Right now, this Forester is the cheapest one. What we're going to do is we're going to measure. We're going to measure length of the tooth from longest point to longest point, and we're going to measure width of the tooth at the widest point. And then after that, we will measure the thickness of the drive length, the part that goes down into the bar. That's your gauge, 50 gauge. Let's start with the LGX. Like I said, they don't make it. You can still get it in places. That's why we're comparing it. This was my go-to chain. I don't need this no more. I love this chain. I wish they still made it. But hey, as they say, most good things all, just about all good things go away in life. So let's do length first, the length of the cutter head. I have not done this beforehand, so I don't, you know, I'm going to be just as surprised as you. Alright, oh. we're all zeroed out, I believe. And this is in, ooh, we got to go, we're going to go, this is America, we're going to go inches. Longest point, the longest point. That is dead on 0.4 inches long. These are the cutter heads. The width of the cutter head. Point one six six. 
All right, so there's our Oregon. I'm gonna grab a marker real quick because I gotta write all this crap down. I'll never remember it. Okay, so the Oregon. 0 0.400 by point, what did I even say that was? See, see what I tell you? 0.166. Okay, so there's our LGX. Let's try the EXL. Length, length, Pete, got to do length first. Point three eight eight. No, no, point three eight seven. So it's a little smaller by point. One six six. Now we might let's just do the gauge too. So where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Anyway, he's poking up. Okay. Point oh four seven. Oh, four, seven. Let's put this one away. We'll measure the LGX gauge real quick. I'm going to do this as quick as I can because I don't want this video to be like super boring for you guys. Okay, let's do this $44 one, this still one. Look at that, we got instructions, fancy stuff. I can't cry. Now, what we what were we doing first? The length. How do they do this? Point three nine three. Point one seven one. That's our gauge. Point oh four eight. Back in a box. Let's go on to that Husqvarna one. Ooh. Look at that booger open. That stays nice sealed. These boxes usually fall apart, but that stays nice and sealed. Husqvarna. Did I say Oregon again? Length. Come on. Point three seven zero. By point one six six. Yeah. 
gauge. Point four nine. Zero point four nine. I'm sorry. Point zero four nine. A little bit. Can you tell I got like a little bit of ADD or dyslexia? Just this, I got just a dabble. All right, so we got this one. This next impossible to get into, which I didn't think about. So you get to watch me scramble looking for a knife. And I can't find. How about this? I got ten snips. We'll get in this son of a bitch. Wow, cutters look big on this. Let's find out. Length of cutter. Point four zero nine. Width of cutter. Point one eight seven. Wow, that's impressive. So far, point zero four nine gauge. That was impressive. I'm not trying to put that back in there. All right, we have the Woodland Pro. Comes inside of a bag, inside of a box. This plastic stretches a mile before it tears. Okay. Now, length 0.415. All right. Point one seven six. Gauge Wow. Point zero five oh. It's right on what they actually say it is. Surprising. It's the first one we had. And the last one, we got the Forester. I'll just lay that there. No, I'm not putting all this back the way I had it. Man. Oh, no, okay. I thought this looked like a steel chain, but it doesn't. Point four oh eight wood point one seven nine come on. Point oh four eight gauge. So, all right, there we have it. Let's do this. Shut this off because the battery died on me earlier. Um, there we have it. So, as right now, your cheapest one is the Forester. But the one you get the most material out of, believe it or not, which is the second from the cheapest, is the Archer, Archer Australia. Close third is gonna be, it's hard. Close third's like Woodland Pro. The ones you actually get the least out of 
are the two Oregon products, believe it or not, which is pretty wild. The one that has the least amount of material looks to be this 72 EXL, unless I'm 0.387. No, the Husqvarna is kind of narrow. And I don't know how that affects performance. You wonder with a bigger tooth, you think you're getting more. But at the same time, maybe that's leaving, as long as you have the same, you know, the, the cutters crossed, they're cutting the same amount, it might make it cut faster. I don't know. We'll see it, that next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to use the saw that I had just rebuilt recently. I'm going to throw a bar on it that I've been running. And I got some red pine out there, I think. It's red pine. And I'm going to put it down. We're going to put the chain on right out of the box. We're just going to do a cut, try to let the weight of the saw pull the saw through. We're not going to time it or anything like that, but we're just going to go because sometimes the out-of-the-box grind kind of sucks on these chains. But we're going to see what the out-of-the-box grind is. So I've seen that in the past. But let me get the log ready, and we'll be back with you shortly. Here we go. We're going to run it on a 372. This is a little hopped up. As you can see, we have the 72 LGX. I don't know if you can see the 72 on there. I'm not going to show you the changing of the chains because it takes too long. But a lot of people say, why would you do an out-of-the-box cut? They're all sharp. Well, they are, but they don't all cut the same in my opinion. Some are better than others. I need to turn this so you can see. You can kind of look at the clock and time it yourself for each one. Or you can time it if you have a stopwatch and time it. Um, I don't have a stopwatch. So here we go. I'm not going to try to push the saw through it. I'm going to rest the saw on it and just kind of let it cut down, fall down through it. Alright, that was the 72 LGX. Okay, here's the EXL, 72 EXL, organ chain. Didn't seem too bad. Noticeably different. The, the LGX cut a little faster, in my opinion. It bit better. Okay, now we have the still chain. It felt like it didn't bite that good. I don't know. It's hard to say. Cut good, but it didn't bite like I think it should. I have the Husqvarna X cut. <laughs> Didn't do bad. Okay, now we have the archer. I think you guys could tell on that one. That was definitely a slower cut. Did not bite very good at all. All right, here we have the Woodland Pro. I don't know. Didn't seem quite as slow as the Archer, but it was definitely slower. Didn't bite real good. We have the last one now. The Forester, this was the cheapest chain. That one actually bit pretty good, believe it or not. Huh. 
Okay, so now we're going to go inside. Uh, we're going to do a slack test. And I'll explain that when we get in there. And we're going to do the file test to see the hardness of the teeth. Okay, so now, next what we're going to do is the sag test or the droop test. This is one I came up with my own. Um, it's similar to like if you were to stretch a tape measure way out when they bend down like this. The, um, the reason I'm doing this is to show the tolerance in the rivets. It shows, you know, like how tight things are put together and whatnot. So, uh, the first one we have here is the LGX. Can you even see that? Let me move the box. Now you can see that. There we go. Okay. Before we get too far into this, here's what I have. I have a the about the nose of a chainsaw bar set back six inches. So right here, six inches. I just use this piece of flat bar stock. So I have the same control. Each chain is you know exactly the same and it follows the straight edge here you stretch it out leave it about the same as a bar on that end too that way you don't have one stretched out more than the other so we do that and all you do is measure the droop at the longest point we've got 13 inches for the lgx so 13 for the lgx Now we're on to the EXL. I wrap that around the circle there. Lay it down. Stretch it so it's straight. All right, let's measure the EXL. This is the Oregon EXL. 12 and a quarter. Not bad, not bad. Why do you say this matters? It just shows how tightly the chain is riveted together and how sloppy or not sloppy it is. It might not matter at all. I just thought this would be an interesting test. All right, let's go for the still. Stretch it over the round. inches lay it out Whoop. and still does not want to lay here we go 12 and a quarter same as the XL Now we have the Husqvarna. This is a pain in the butt. There we have it. 12 and 3 quarters. So far it's a tie. Let's do the archer. This one seems stiff. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. 
12, 12 and an eighth, 12 and a quarter right there. Woodland Pro. This seems kind of rigid. 11 and 3 quarters for the Woodland Pro. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. Last, the Forester. This being the cheapest chain I've found so far. I know there's cheaper out there. This is the one I can readily get my hands on. Now that one is by far the most rigid. Coming in at seven and three quarters. Now I don't know if that matters or not, but it seems like there's less play amongst the rivets in that one. And that's the Forester chain. It sags the least. Now we'll go over here, I'll set a bar up and we will do the file test for hardness. Okay, the file test. This is all the file test is. We're gonna put the chain on here like this. We're gonna take a brand new, which you can't buy these anymore. These were by far the best files I have found so far. Save Edge file. And I'll be doing a file review in a future video to find out which files I think are best. Let's go with brand new because I do have one up here that I was using. Let me just swap that out. Okay. New and shiny. What we're looking for is softness of the tooth because out of the box is nice and it can be hard as can be, but if you can't sharpen it, the teeth are no good. So 72 LGX. I'm going to do it back here so we don't get any vibration. One handed. Cuts pretty nice. Doesn't sound smooth, good. I like it. So I'm just going to mark the teeth I do that to so I know because I'm going to use these in the future. So there was our 72 LGX. Let's do the EXL. I can kind of predict what's going to happen here. This is the problem I've had with these. EXL. Oregon. Ready? That one is not too bad. Little bit of raspy, kind of hard. You can hear it. It's got like that wrap to it. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Now we have our still chain. There. Yeah. I forgot to mark that one. Ready? Wow, that's hard. Initially, it has a hard spot, but it seems like after you get that initial hard spot off, it's not too bad at all. But initially, it does have a hard spot. Now our Husqvarna. Ooh, 
a little hard at first, just like the still. Oh man, that's smooth. That cuts nice. Files very nicely. Yes, glide right through it. Wonder if that initial little hard spot is from like the cure when they heat treat them in the beginning. All right, let's do that archer, the one with the biggest tooth. Is that the biggest tooth? No. I can't remember. I can't remember now. We have so many of these. Okay. Soft right out of the gate. No hard spot. Wow, that glides really nice. I got to say that that's really nice. Surprising, wasn't expecting that. No hard spot like the initial two. Now, is it too soft? I don't know. Now we got the Woodland Pro here. Ooh. Nice, not a hard spot, takes the file good. Not bad, not bad. Now we have the Forester. The last one. I don't want to fit all the way in the thing. All right, this was the cheapest chain. Tell you what, it ain't bad. Little chatter at first, not bad. All right, meet you back at the desk for a final review. All right, guys, so here you have it, our lineup. Um, we went through, and I do believe the chain with the biggest dimensions, well, it was kind of a toss up, but the Archer seems like it has about the most material between that and the Woodland Pro. Now, still was the expensive, Archer was the cheapest. Cutting. I feel like Archer did the worst. Um, the best two, ah, well, it's kind of a toss up. I feel like the LGX still and the X cut were all kind of like right there in their same plane. Um, on the cheap end of chains, the Forester was the winner, but the Archer and the Woodland Pro, in my opinion, didn't didn't do as good as I, I thought they might. And that might have something to do with the dimensions of the teeth being bigger. I don't know. And it could just be the out-of-the-box grind. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch each chain up and do another cut test because that's unfair. Because if you know how to sharpen a chain, you can do some pretty and pretty incredible things with it. Um for hardness, the still the three hardest were the EXL, sorry, I have this box upside down. The EXL, the Still, and the X-Cut. Those were the three hardest. The two nicest out of the box to sharpen. Now, whether or not they're too soft, I don't know. The Archer wasn't bad, the Woodland Pro wasn't bad, and neither was the Forester. Could that be, you know, it's soft, cheap metal. Will it hold that edge? I don't know. Time will tell that. But these were definitely the hardest the EXL seemed to be that and the still were right there with like just just hard like a really hard to make that initial cut with the file I've been running the EXL and I know it wears your files out fast they're typically a hard chain so 
we'll see in time. Hopefully, what I did here gives you some insight. Can I say, yep, buy this one or buy that one? No, I can't say that because in the end of the day, that's your choice. You know, you might be say, hey, I'll buy that Forester and I'll, you know, suffer through having to sharpen it a couple extra times because that chain's not as soft. Uh, the steel in the chain's kind of soft over paying, you know, $19 for the X cut or whatever, $19 for the Archer. Um, or I couldn't tell you, hey, buy the Archer over the EXL because you get more value in the teeth. There's more steel in the teeth. I can't, can't do that. Um, that is a decision at the end of the day that I feel you have to make. Um, one that I say is not worth the money is the still. For what you're getting, $44. I'm sure people are going to say, hey, I can get that out there cheaper somewhere else. And I'm sure you can. But I am just went for, you know, Joe Schmo goes to whatever store and buys it, wherever. That's roughly what it's going to cost, if not more. I think $44 for a chain when comparable chains are offered at half to less than half the price more than often, thanks to the internet nowadays, that's some serious dealer markup, you know, between brand and dealer markup. I don't think that's worth it. Make a good product, but I just don't think it's worth the money. Um, if I ever had to recommend something to somebody, right now I'm in between the Woodland Pro and the Husqvarna X-Cut. Um, if I could still get the LGX regularly, I'd recommend that right out the door all over all these. But since it's hard to find, if you can, that would be a good one to use. But if you can't, uh, like I said, I'm between the Husky and the Woodland Pro. I got to say, it's going to be interesting to try some of these other ones. I'm really interested to see how this Archer and this Forester perform, um, how they hold an edge and cut, because that was pretty wild. I didn't get the results I was expecting. So hopefully this helps somebody um, make an educated decision on what they want to use or what route they want to go. At the end of the day, it's your money. You spend it how you want. So once again, thanks for watching. Everybody, take care and have a wonderful day. We will do, in the future, I don't know when, we're going to do a file lineup. What file is best? What file holds up longer? And what file is the cheapest. So we'll go with that. But until then, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Once again, don't let your meat love.